Hello there. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a cool, fluid-like particle simulation like this using Cinema 4D's new particle system. I made this render a few weeks ago, and here's the tutorial for it. Let's get started. Open a new scene and create an inside object. Change its radius to 250 centimeters and sides to four. Make sure the end side is selected. Go to the Simulate menu and create a spline emitter. Check if the end side is linked to this emitter's input field. Play the simulation and you can see particles emitting. I will increase the particle emission rate to 30,000 for now. Go to the Properties tab, tick the Lifetime option and change the life value. Set the particle's speed and the speed variance value to zero. Change the alignment to random. Now, if you play the simulation, you can see the particles are emitting but not moving. Currently, we don't have any forces. I'll also add some rounding to the end side for better results. Rename this end side. I'll set this to big. Make a copy of it and rename it to small. Change the size of the smaller end side and also the rounding value. You can set these values however you like. Go to the Simulate menu, Modifiers, and add a Follow Spline modifier. Drag this under the particle group. Now, select and drag the small end side into the target spline field. Run the simulation. You can see the particles are moving. It looks cool, but we don't want this. So, let's change some settings. First, change the mode from Rail to Guide. Increase the effect radius. This will make sure all the moving particles get affected. Also, change the attract strength to 2. Run the sim and see how the particles are behaving. We are getting close. Go to the simulation menu again, and this time add a friction force. I want to introduce some drag. This is very important when you want to slow down the very fast-moving particles. You will get a much better simulation. You can see how smooth and fluid it looks now. Not so chaotic anymore. Let's make it more interesting. I'm going to animate the big end side along the Z-axis. Add a keyframe on the first frame. Go to the end of the timeline, change the base value to 360, and add another keyframe. Right-click on this parameter. Go to the animation and show the F-curve. Press Ctrl plus A to select all and change the spline type to linear. Now we have a more interesting sim. This is good, but it's so two-dimensional and flat. We need to add some turbulence forces. Go to the Simulate menu again and add a turbulence force. Increase the strength to something like 120 and scale to 70. We might play with these values later. For now, let's run the sim. It looks super chaotic. To fix this, make sure the turbulence force comes before the friction force so that the drag is applied on top of everything. Make a copy of this turbulence force and lower the strength and scale values for smaller level details. Make a copy of it again and change the values for even smaller details. Now you can see we got some fine curls along with big turbulence noise. Hit Ctrl plus D to go to the Project Simulation Settings, go to the Particles tab, and change the sub-steps to 2. Run the simulation, and now you can see we got the desired look. This is looking like a controlled, smooth, and fluid-like effect. I like this. I'll increase the particles rate amount to 100,000. You can also add a color modifier if you want and play with the settings. I'm not going to use this in the final render. I'll duplicate this smaller end side and rename it to logo. You can add your own logo in the center, although it's not so important. 
I'll increase the emission rate even more. Make sure to save your project. Now you can render this however you like. I'm using Arnold for this. You can use any render engine you like. The process is similar and simple. Add an HDRI for ambient lighting with very low intensity. Add the object render tag. I'm using Arnold, so I'll add the Arnold object tag. And I'll make a lot of smaller cubes. Also, add a bigger one for variance. Create your materials and apply them to the cubes. For the bigger cube, I added a shiny metal material for the glittering effect. Instance these cubes in the shapes field of the object tag. Add an area light and move it to the side. Increase the intensity. Also, add a plane object in the background with some dark diffuse material. This is all just basic stuff. I hope you can do these things on your own. You can play with the end sides too and change the number of sides to make different shapes. Have fun with it. I didn't put too much time into this for the sake of the tutorial. But if you need the original project file for this render, head over to my Patreon. I'll put the link in the description. You can get project files for all the tutorials there. And by taking a membership, you can support me. You can also follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of personal renders there. Follow me, and you can also message me there if you have any queries. Or you can just like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you're liking these short and clear video tutorials. Also, comment on what the next tutorial you would like to see. That's all for now. I'll see you later.